Welcome to Vicky Fung's channel. Here you will find tips and advice on Interview and job search Hiring and recruitment Management Leadership and many others Let's start Leadership tips How to effectively convey messages in emails Part 1 in today's fast-paced business world, email is very crucial in business communication. However, conveying messages through emails can be tricky, often leading to unintended miscommunication, misunderstandings, and conflicts in the workplace. In my previous video, I listed the various contributing factors, such as the relative position with the person, length of the relationships, the emotional histories, personalities, wordings of the emails, language barriers, assumptions made, etc. As a leader, it is your responsibility to ensure that your emails conveys the intended message clearly and avoids the potential issues of miscommunication. In this video, I will share the top 5 writing tips so that your emails are well understood and effective. Let's start now. Tip number 1. Use clear and concise language. Clear and concise language can help to convey your emotions effectively and avoid miscommunication at work, particularly when you're discussing sensitive topics or conveying a sense of urgency. Be sure to choose your words carefully and avoid using complex language or industry jargons that your colleagues may not understand. Instead, Try to use straightforward wordings that everyone can easily understand. For example, in self writing, I would like to respectfully decline this offer. You can simply write, No, thank you. This eliminates any confusion or misinterpretations that could arise from unclear language. Tip number two Be aware of your language at the tone. Sometimes, when we are frustrated and angry, we might express ourselves with colorful words to convey how we feel at that moment. However, in a professional setting, using emotionally charged language can bring potential issues, and it's better to avoid it. Here are five useful tips that can help you for effective email communication. First, use neutral language. Stay to the facts and be objective when you write emails. I find using words or phrases that express anger, frustrations, words, or disappointment. Second, separate emotions from the issue. If you need to address an emotional issue in your email, try to separate the emotions from the problem. Acknowledge the emotions, but focus on the issue to be resolved. Third, explain the situation fully. Provide any necessary details so that there's no confusion. I find using weak or general statements instead be specific and direct. Four, use examples to insulate your part. When writing emails, use specific examples to insulate your part. This will help your recipients understand your message and avoid any misinterpretations. Fifth, the tone should be friendly and professional and to reflect the nature of your message. For instance, if you are sending your email to congratulate a candidate, your tone should be warm. On the other hand, if you are sending an email to address an issue, your tone should be assertive but not aggressive. Tip number three, choose your words carefully. Take the time to craft the right message to that reflects how you feel without upsetting or offending anyone. Choose your words carefully. For example, instead of saying, I can't believe you didn't complete the report on time. You can say, I noticed the report wasn't submitted by the deadline. Is there anything I can do to help? 
this amendment has the audience feel heard and supported rather than attacked. Ari strives to use polite and professional language, especially when communicating with superiors or clients. Advise using all capital letters or excessive punctuation, which can be interpreted as shouting or anger. Tip number four: Use emojis with caution. In a digital age, emojis are commonly used. They can add a touch of personalities and make your email seem more friendly, but sometimes they may not be very appropriate. Before using emojis, consider the context of email and who is being sent to. Are they appropriate for the level of formalities needed? If you are unsure, it's better to stick with plain text. Always be mindful of how your words and choices of emojis might be perceived by your readers. For example, a smiling emoji might come across differently to someone who is not familiar with it, or to someone who is upset about the matter being discussed. When in doubt, leave emojis out. Tip number five: Be mindful of the reader's perspective. Try to put yourself in the reader's shoes and think about how they might perceive your message. For example, if you're sending an email with constructive criticism, consider how your reader might feel and try to select your wordings and structure your sentences in a way that is respectful and encouraging. It is all about finding the right balance between being straightforward. And being sensitive to the other person's feelings. As a leader, it is crucial to ensure that your emails are clear and concise to avoid any risk of misunderstanding and miscommunication. Apart from these five tips, in my next video, I will share with you for several attention areas that often being neglected when sending emails. Please stay tuned. Lastly, if you like this video, please press like and continue to support me. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Take a look at my courses in the description below if you're interested. Lastly, thank you for watching my video. See you again soon.